Thank you, Ori. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon now. And as you can see there, that wonderful sight. We'll be talking more about the masses when they get going in 15 minutes with the elite men. Before that, it is the opportunity for the elite women to set off in this very special event this year. And we mentioned Tiranesh de Barba. You can see her just on the left of the picture there. And she's got against her, well, a field which I don't think any of them will think will beat Tiranesh de Barba today, but they'll be all looking for their own performances. Katrina Wooten coming back to some very good form, Katrina, and ran very well in the 10,000 metre trial for the World Championships held last week in London. And Katrina, one of our great young talents a good few years ago, is really coming back into her own at the moment. Sophie Duarte of France, two very experienced French athletes here, former European cross-country champion, and then her teammate, a few years older, I won't quite say, let, well, let's just say she's in the Joe Pavey uh, bracket, over 40. Christelle Dornay, European marathon champion from 2014. Well, for Gemma Steele, it's been a difficult last couple of years and uh, looked at one point as though she really was having a burgeoning career on the roads and up to the marathon. Well, she's put the marathon to one side for the time being and today we'll be taking on once more the great Tiranesh de Barber, the defending champion here in Manchester. So good to see her here at any year, but this year in particular. The stars coming out to support everybody else and they know that they take second billing this morning or today so just a few seconds late so taxis, sound and away they go the elite women's race gets underway and they have the roads clear and big big crowds expected well we know we can see them ourselves already out there and all the way along this route they will be cheered as i said it will be the turn of the masses and the senior men in about 15 minutes or just less than 15 minutes now but it's a good morning to paula radcliffe good morning i keep saying good morning i'm gonna to have to apologize it's now afternoon i'm so used to being here in the morning anyway good afternoon paula good afternoon and good afternoon to everybody good afternoon especially to the people out there waiting to, to support the runners around this course today, but also waiting to, to get started and to, to complete this event and to complete this run and to, to get on with what I think makes us all feel, feel better each day, to show we're united, to show we're going to carry on um, and just to, to show that life goes on and to show that spirit there as well. And straight away, it's good to show yeah, See Chris, Katrina Wooten showing a little bit of that fighting spirit um, in attempting to, to go with Tiranesh de Barbo, I think is very much expected to run away with this race here today. But Katrina in very, very good shape, an old club mate of mine from a long time ago back at Bedford and County, but raced very well at Highgate in the British 10 kilometer trial, just missed the qualifying standard and just missed qualifying, but did qualify for the European Cup in Minsk, which I think is later this month. Uh, so she'll be hoping to improve on the time there and probably won't be aiming to stay with Tiranesh de Barber very long, but it's good to see as we look at the course here. Do you want to talk us through the course? Yeah, it's uh, the familiar route and you know, hats off to everybody. We'll talk about more of this in the mass races, but it's been a massive logistical exercise uh, to make sure the event goes ahead today. Uh, but it is the same route. Uh, one or two slight little changes around Old Trafford for the masses. But by and large, that's where they know they've reached halfway and then they turn back you know, around the Salford Keys area there, Media City just across the way. And then when they come back onto Mancunian Way, they see all the runners going in the opposite direction. Lots of waves, of course, with 35,000 people. Then not everybody can be on the course at exactly the same time, but those roads become absolutely covered with runners for the duration of the afternoon. Finish here in Deansgate, where we did have the City Games. We saw Kim Collins uh, at the start. Great to see him here supporting everybody today. So Friday was emotional. It was a great afternoon. And a lot of the elite athletes said how much they were delighted to be here, including Dinesh de Barber as well. More of the women's elite race shortly. I'm going to hand over to someone. Well, a great bunch of superheroes there. They're all superheroes today. 
and in terms of athletics, one of the greatest of all time, already out there in front. Three-time Olympic champion, Tirnesh de Barba of Ethiopia, already set out with real intent. Katrina Witten stayed with her in the early stages, very brave, because first kilometre was 3.05, second kilometre, we've just been told, is 3.07. She's not far off her course record pace of 30.49, so she has really attacked this early on, Paula. She has, and in fact, she's up on her course record pace because when she ran that course record, she ran slower in the first half, so she's well up on that pace already. And if the wind hasn't changed since I went out for my run earlier on this morning, she's in, running into a headwind as well, which makes it even more impressive. Impressive, too, that Katrina Wooten tried to go with that, but she has quickly now settled back, and unfortunately, that means for Katrina now she's going to be running on her own for the rest of this race pretty much because she's a well way ahead of the chasing pack behind her currently being led by Christelle Donnet. Well that's the situation at the front of the elite women elite men and the masses will start shortly let's go back to the start with Louise. Thank you so much and um, it is an intense atmosphere as we stand here and I just want to show you I know you can see this shot on your television but it is heart-stopping in some ways to look up this beautiful street and see so many thousands of people behind us, um, all waiting. And I know, having done this run myself a couple of times before, uh, this is a nervous moment, an exciting moment. But every single person that you can see there has made their own individual decision when they wake up this morning to come out and less than a week after that horrific attack, to come out here onto the streets of Manchester and it is really, it's a very, very poignant and in different parts of this city as well, there are different things going on. Over in St Anne's Square, for example, there is quiet, there is contemplation and there are still people in tears this morning as they go there to pay tribute to the victims. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Um, there is going to be a minute silence before every single race, every single wave in this race today. Are we going to take that first minute silence um, and we will stay with the runners as they do that. And then we're going to hear the words as well from Tony Walsh, the, the poet. He's reading a poem, it's called Do Something and he'll read that for every single wave too. I'm going to leave you with one minute silence for the victims of that attack. Thank you, Manchester. As we know, as we've shown the world, this is the place where we do something. Do something to show them what you're made of. Do something you've never done before. Do something to beat what you're afraid of. Do something to make your spirit soar. Do something to get your heartbeat pounding, pounding, pounding. Do something with all your heart and soul and rock and roll. Do something to show we are astounding. Do something and this is how we roll. 
Do something to match a city's greatness. Do something through sunshine and through rain. Do something to say we need to hate less. Do something through courage and through pain. Do something for someone that you care for. Do something to help out with the cost. Do something for someone that you're there for. Do something for someone that you've lost. Do something to tell someone you love them. Do some then, something for someone who has gone. Do something for those with none above them. Do something for someone who lives on. Do something to stand out from the crowd and do something to keep a dream alive. Do something to make a city proud and do something to shout, hope will survive. Do something to show you don't surrender, we don't surrender. Do something for those we owe a debt, we thank you. Do something a city will remember. Do something the world will not forget. Do something for this great city's story. Do something and show them how it's done. Do something for love in all its glory. Do something, the great Manchester. Do something for great Manchester. Do something, the great Manchester run and make it live forever. Do something, the great Manchester run. Choose love. Have a fantastic Manchester day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Walsh, a.k.a. One Fair. Well, inspiring words from Tony Walsh. Lots has been written and said this week about the resolve of the people of Manchester. But now it's their chance to show their unity and their determination to carry on. It will begin one step at a time, but they will move forward. And today, they all move forward together, individually, but as one. It's all about the 35,000 taking part and the rest of the city hosting them but they will also appreciate the elite athletes at the front. Here we go, the great Manchester run. <laughs> I'm sure at the end for most of these people and for the next 10 kilometers though it's a chance for them to reflect and for everybody watching as well but it's also as I said a chance to show what this city is about show what it's made of show what its people are about and as we've been saying all morning it's simply incredible that so many have turned up here today and they've not been cowed by events they are, of course, respectful and remember all of those who suffered so tragically. And the city has been an inspiring place to be over the last two days or so. And of course, they're not all Mancunians. They've come from around the UK and some have come from different parts of the world as well. Nobody wanted to miss this special day and a special word should be given not only to those who organize the event and of course it's been a, a week of a lot of hard work for people but I think what everybody is saying it's the as ever the emergency services who've were challenged so much this week but of course then also are a big part of a day like today and so many thanks going to them from all of these people and I'm sure people watching as well but the event goes on as it has done over the last few years an event which has grown with the city and is an event which has always shown off the best of Manchester but today more so than ever Up 
Paula, you said you were out running this morning and uh, running such a big part of often healing in a lot of people's lives, I think, but um, when we see big events like this and, uh, you know, we always say it's a great sight, it's wonderful to see so many people out running. You and I, for, you know, this was uh, how we earned our living for so many years, but um, today, and I think on other occasions, we think of the Boston Marathon a couple of years ago. Um, it, it is a way for people to, to show their love for the city and to show their respect, as I said earlier on, for all those who suffered. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think sport uh, and running in particular demonstrates humanity in a way that will always come to the fore. Uh, and so many people will turn to running to celebrate happiness and to heal and to recover and to show that that spirit will go on uh, and will fight on and that humanity will always be stronger than inhumane acts and acts which try and defeat that human spirit and people being able to come out today and celebrate that be able to get out along the course if they're not taking part and in their own way in their own unique way and each will be different move on in a way that will always remember those people remember those people who suffered but they will move on and be able to to show that as i say human spirit will will always win where we will be of course concentrating on the masses today but the elite races uh, we shouldn't ignore the fact that we have here in Tiranes de Barba, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, female distance runner of all time. And she's going quick. That 15.40 through the 5K is exactly the time she went through when she actually set the record here, the record being 30.49. And she did speed up dramatically in the second part on that occasion. She started pretty quick today. Katrina Wooden went with her for the first kilometre or so, uh, has dropped back now and has been chased by the group, which has Dornay and Duarte, the two French athletes, Gemma Steele in there as well, Emma Mitchell from Ireland. But De Barber has the streets all to herself. Katrina Wooden, a little bit lonely in second place, and she'll have to watch for those chasing. They're about 20 seconds behind Katrina at the moment. Yeah, she may be able to rally as they come by and catch her, but for Tiranesh De Barber, she's looking very, very strong. It's only, what is it, five, six weeks since that incredible run of hers in the London Marathon where she pretty much ran herself to, to complete exhaustion, was in a lot of difficulty in the closing mile of, of that race, and yet she's bouncing back now, and we've just been told that's a sixth kilometre in 3.02. So she's picking up, as she did when she set the course record, is bringing it home faster and is showing that, that she has recovered fully almost from that London Marathon and is ready to, to build on that and begin her track campaign with Ernest. Well, she is shifting along at the moment. That is one of the quicker kilometres. And uh, as you said, she has a little look behind. There's nothing to see. Um, she'll be seeing the uh, elite men going in the opposite direction. That might have been what she saw, actually. Well, not quite yet. She had a little glance at the shower. Not quite a day for the showers. It's actually perfect. I think Ori mentioned earlier on we have nice temperatures for racing and a little bit of a breeze it was quite windy in manchester particularly yesterday uh, but that's settled down thankfully so tiranesh de barber very much as paula was saying off the back of london marathon moving you know the marathon is where her sights are these days however she's still a real talent to be reckoned with on the roads as well over 10 kilometers so anything under 31 minutes is, is, you know, is, is very good, obviously. Um, uh, and I don't think she's going to be too far away from that, Paula. That record of 30-49, um, it would be really something if she were to achieve that. But as I said, something around uh, 31 minutes probably more likely. Yeah, I mean, when she ran that, she came back in a 15.09 second five kilometres. And I mean, she's not far off that if she's throwing in 3.02s. But to be able to maintain that through the next four kilometres is going to be tough. It is pretty much a, a lone run. It's pretty much like a training run for her from this point in, although she will have a, a lot of support. But it's hard to, to keep pushing and to keep pushing hard, A, when you're bouncing back from a 2.17 marathon that she ran a couple of weeks ago, um, but also when you have the race won and your real focus is, is on building for the season ahead. This is cutting back to um, Christelle Dornay of France, the European 
marathon champion from 2014 who has Katrina Wooten in her sights there. And hopefully as she catches Katrina, Katrina can rally a little bit uh, and stay with her. But Christelle is looking strong now. She's been running strongly for, for a long time. All of her personal bests have been run since 2010. So she came very late to the fore in her career, but maintaining that form. Well, this is the front of the men's race. Didn't really get the chance to talk about the elite runners, but that's Dayton Ritzenheim, the very good American. Uh, Bernard Lagat, you can see just uh, in the group there. Collis Birmingham, the tall figure from Australia. Andy Vernon is at the back of that group. And then Wilson Kipsang, um, the winner of London Marathon in the past, to won Tokyo Marathon earlier on this year. Won't be contesting the World Championships, actually. And I think that's Stephen Makoka uh, in there as well. So that kilometre, the second one is 250. They went 246 for the first one, 250. So they're not hanging around. And Ritzenheim obviously deciding the good policy for him today is to get out there and, uh, and lead this. Well, it's pretty much the way that Dathan Ritzenheim runs most of his races is to, to really gut it out, to, to get out there, to go to the front. He, I guess, as, as a runner, really does kind of personify that, that Manchester fighting spirit we were talking about. He lays it all on the line um, and into his pretty strong headwind. He is pushing hard in this race and dragging the others with him. Well, early stages of the men's race, Tim Nestor-Barber heading down the dual carriage in the opposite direction. But for now, we're just going to pop back to the start again with Louise. Yeah, good luck to the Cholton crew there. In the men's race, well, it's as you were, those uh, five are still at the front now. Collis Birmingham doing his little stint with Ritzenheim. They've been setting a, a decent pace, Kipsang uh, going well with that. Lagat in the group there, Makoka, but Andy Vernon has dropped off uh, rather sadly. Andy, who will be running in Hengelo in a couple of weeks' time uh, to try to get the 10,000 metre qualifying time for the World Championships. So they're approaching halfway, the men, but in the women's race, it's all about Tirnesta Barber, and she's been getting quicker towards the end. We said she'd be aiming at around 31 minutes. She's going to be very close to that. She's into the last kilometre now, and it won't be long before, certainly where she is, she'll be able to see the railway bridge, which we are on the opposite side of on Dean's Gate. And uh, that's about 200 metres to go. So it won't be far long before she'll be able to see that. And it's been another display from Tirnesta Barber Paula. Um, strong as ever, she's clicking along at about 3.5 per kilometre at the moment, going really well. Yeah, we said that she might feel a little bit like um, she's on a training run. She looks a little bit like she's on a training run. She doesn't look as though she's anywhere close to, to maximum e effort. If you contrast her style and her expression even with the closing stages of that London Marathon when she was really struggling and pushing her body on with every stride, it's very, very different. And she's obviously recovered very well from that and has put on a pretty much textbook display of, of how to bounce back from that and get your legs turning over at a quicker speed in preparation for the track season. And it's important to her, I think, to, to tick this off and to, to move on from here, to come here and support Manchester as well. But she will be now aiming for that finish line and she will have had a time in mind that she would want to shoot close to. But I think the biggest thing was just to, to get out and just to feel that her legs were responding well. Very quickly, this is uh, Christelle Dorn, who's now past Katrina Wooten after that very fast start from Wooten. She's paying for that a little bit because Dorn has moved in to second place. She's a long way behind Tirnesh de Barber, who now, as I said, is coming under the railway bridges and the crowd here, all I can see them all moving to the barriers to cheer Tirnesh de Barber. She's become a familiar sight here in Manchester. And they are so pleased that she's here, along with everybody else, of course. So Tirnes de Barber sprinting home, as she always manages to do, still looking pretty fresh. And she wins the Great Manchester 10K just outside 31 minutes. As Paulo was saying, maybe no more than a hard training run, but by anyone else's standards, that's world-class racing. So a little smile from Tirnes de Barber. Another superb performance from her, 31.03 the winning time, acknowledging the crowd, some friends in the crowd as well. And she's become a great friend of Manchester and I'm sure she wouldn't want to have missed this race at all today. She's also an Arsenal fan, so she will have been um, <laughs> happy watching yesterday and maybe that gave her a little bit of an extra boost today. So a quick look back at the men's race and it's still 
Dathan Ritzenheim pushing on hard here. Collis Birmingham in the center there, the taller figure in the blue and pink, was pushing it on a little bit with Dathan earlier, but now it's Stephen Makoka, uh, South African multiple champion over multiple distances, who also knows these Manchester streets very, very well, who, who's keeping the pace very honest uh, and moving along strongly in that 250 range they were for the first four kilometers now picked up with a 249 and a 246 they went through halfway in 1407 so a respectable pace and and bernard legat hanging in there have to come bouncing back from his pacemaking duties in the breaking two bid in in monza two three weeks ago yeah, Makoka then on one side of the road, it's a bit like a horse race, isn't it, where they split to either side, looking for the good ground, it's all the same on the roads. And there's Christelle Dornay coming through for second place, the 42-year-old from France, the European, I guess she's still the defending champion because the European Championships, I don't know, we had some in 2016, I forget, they're every two years now. Um, Christelle Dornay applauding the crowd, a great gesture from the French woman, and of course France themselves have had so many terrorist atrocities to deal with. I remember um, Nice, of course, uh, the Diamond League had to follow on from there, so many of the athletes were aware of that atrocity on that particular occasion, and Dornay applauding the home crowd, Katrina Wooten as well. Duarte coming across the line in fourth. It's a tough race for Katrina out there, having had a real go with Tiernes de Barber, and here's Gemma Steele. That's a pretty solid run from Gemma. She comes across the line in fifth place in around 33.40. Well, you'd be excused for thinking Tiernes should um, not been out for a hard run this morning. Looks very relaxed. But to be fair, she always looks that way, you know, all the way through her track career, and even now when she's running the marathon, you'd very hard to tell when she's tired. Well, this is really warming up in the men's race now. Ritzenheim, Makoka, Bernard Lagat, the great 1,500-metre runner who is now enjoying racing on the roads in the latter part of his career and enjoying the longer distances. Doesn't have to worry about the speed and the kick, but I'll tell you what, if he's still hanging around towards the end there, he'll be looking to use that. So Makoka aware of that, trying to push on. Hadn't been running that well this winter, Stephen Makoka, but he ran a pretty good 12K race uh, back in South Africa just recently, 34-43, which is much better than the performances he'd had up to that. So if that last race just showing he has been coming back into form. Ritzenheim won, recently won the American 25K championships, a bit of an odd distance that, but a little bit more than half marathon. And his exploits over the marathon have been really disappointing recently. He, he, he was a, a non-finisher in the American trials. Um, last year and I think in New York as well he didn't finish there in in October so he's had a, a difficult year or so yeah Dathan's one of those athletes who's really struggled shown huge potential and is probably the perfect half marathon runner and he's really struggled to, to move up to to the marathon distance suffered a lot with cramping with getting his, his fueling strategies right but he is a formidable racer over the 10 kilometers uh, and the half marathon started out his career with early success in the world junior cross country championships um, back in 2001 he was on the podium there which for an american junior coming through was a huge breakthrough uh, and he's really built on that through his career but never quite been able to to reflect that on the the world stage uh, at world championship and olympic level and i think he shows when he races in events like this really how much he is prepared to to fight and how that cross-country manner of, of racing of judging your effort uh, and racing those around you and racing the course rather than racing the clock is important well, he's trying to break that group up there. Lagat looks very comfortable. He's been having a little look around. He's been watching the athletes going in the opposite direction and looking relaxed. And I think the other two are aware of that. Makoka had a little bit of a push. Now Ritzenheim really wanting to go here. And to me, it's Lagat is the one looking most comfortable at this stage. Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, if you told you coming into a, a 10K, you'd do a workout of 3 by 5 k in between 14.7 and 14.10. You'd think that was a pretty good workout, wouldn't you? He did that pace in the breaking too. 
um, but he did say there uh, that he would push on hard against Kipchoge in the closing stages and make him race to the line uh, and really help him as much as possible as he could there and he was viewing it as good training he was already talking about coming here uh, and wanting to race and perform well here and I think it's a little bit of um, an enjoyment well, it's always been enjoyment for Bernard the Gap but it's an enjoyment year for him in terms that he can pick those events that really mean something to him and go there and race and enjoy doing that and he's very much doing that here today but the guys around him will be very aware that he's sitting in the middle there and he is by far the quickest finisher of the three So Rittenheim trying to push on, Lagat looking comfortable, Makoko under a little bit of pressure at this moment. Makoko finished second last year, Lagat was third, uh, Stephen Sambu won the race, but it could be Rittenheim this year, will they finish second and third to somebody else? Or will Lagat get a victory here? Kipsang fourth, and then Collis Birmingham fifth. Well, there's been a little bit of a break now, Makoko, as we suspected, is the first to fall off that group of three Kipsang went first then Makoka and Rittenheim is really applying the pressure here he knows the danger that Bernard Lagat uh, possesses in terms of his kick ability even though Bernard's you know in the should we say the the twilight of his um, track career if he still manages to run on the track but uh, Lagat there just hovering isn't he? he's working hard but he knows every step it's moving into his territory because when they get into the last 200 meters I'll be surprised if Ritzenhain can break him but he's trying his best here yeah, I mean Dathan Ritzenhain isn't any slouch it's just that uh, Bernard Legat is, is very very fast but at the end of a 10 kilometers it, it's a little bit different certainly on the road to, to finishing a 1500 meters or 5000 meters on the track so Dathan working as hard as he can he sees the nine kilometer marker there so he knows he's got less than three minutes of running now to just try everything that he can throw everything that he can at Bernard Legat to try and shake him off and just get a little bit of daylight because if he's still sitting on his shoulder or moving alongside him as he's threatening to do now coming into to the straight here on Dean's Gate then Dathan's in trouble But when you've run as fast as Bernard Langat, over 1,500, the mile, 5,000 metres, he's world champion at, at 1,500 and 5,000 in the past, Olympic silver medalist at 1,500 metres. And showing, though, that you know, all 1,500 metre runners are, you know, are endurance athletes, he would never have taken the best on over 10,000 metres on the track. But on the roads, at this sort of pace, he's definitely competitive. And Ritzenheim there, you can see that last kilometre. What he can't do is like break a 240 or something here. He's been, it's always been around the 245 to 250. So that, you know, that's not really a change of pace. So Lagat is hanging on, definitely hanging on. But now he knows he's getting close to finish. Makoka looks very tired now. I don't think he's going to be caught by Kipsang though. Well, it could be Birmingham who catches him though. Kipsang not going so well, but Collis Birmingham rallying in the latter stages and got Makoka in his sights. So the tall Australian, who hasn't raced all that much in 2017, is uh, chasing down for third. But look at this. Well, Lagat can't hang on. Rittenheim's done what he's been trying to do for the last two kilometres. He's broken him. And that's reward for David Ritzenheim. If you'd looked at their expression on their faces and he's not got this one yet, Lagat is still fighting hard. But the look of determination on the face of Dathan Ritzenheim is totally different to that on the face uh, of Bernard Lagat. He was working hard, but you just couldn't see it reflected in his face. And you can see on Dathan Ritzenheim how much this means to him. And he's had a turbulent last um, couple of weeks for, for Dathan Ritzenheim. He's had a lot of things going on back in the US. So he's probably happy to, to come here and to let his feet and legs do the talking and to go out and race hard uh, and run away from that and celebrate it with a strong run here. So Dathan Ritzenheim of the USA, he hasn't had an awful lot to cheer in the last 12 months or so, but he had a big win in the American Road Championships and here he's come to Manchester on this emotional day and what a win it is going to be for him. He keeps checking behind because he's expecting Lagat to charge but he's not going to do that it's going to be the american who comes home to win the great manchester 10k dathan rittenheim is this year's champion 
28.06 the winning time, great performance from him, a good front-running performance from Ritzenheim. Lagat takes second place, one better than he finished last year, and he thought he was going to be able to hang on for the kick, but he couldn't. Makoka just hangs on for third, ahead of Collis Birmingham, and then the great marathon champion Wilson Kipsang taking fifth place. Last kilometre was... 250, I'm being told, which it's slightly uphill. Andy Vernon just crossing the line there, like 30 seconds behind the winner. But that meant a lot, I think, to Dathan Ritzenheim, Paula. I know you would have enjoyed that. Person at the front, running hard, getting rid of the kicker. Yeah, we're just looking at him there, just showing Brendan Foster how much it means to him to, to come here. I think he's raced here a couple of times, Dathan, but he's not actually won here before. And so to be able to, to come here to start his, his summer campaign, but he has been racing very very well on the roads so far in the States this year already, but to celebrate that with a victory over a tough field. I mean, he, he beat Bernard Legat and he beat him well by making it a race to his strengths here today and running strongly out, out there and really pushing and taking the race to him uh, and being able to, to come away with a victory means a huge amount to Dave Hood tonight. Steve Scullion just crossing the line there from Ireland and well then now we see the better the club athletes coming through still under 30 minutes so some really good performances here one or two PBs I'm sure well, it was hard for Ritzenheim. He knew what he had to do, and you always have to admire a distance runner who applies himself in such a way over the last couple of kilometres, trying to get rid of the big kicker, trying to get rid of one of the best to, in terms of kicking, Bernard Lagat and Ritzenheim. Look how much it means to him today. Big victory for him. Something for him to cheer about what's been a difficult period for him. A rather tired Bernard Lagat coming in in second place. So let's just tidy it up. Um, all of the results today. Earlier on, we had two wheelchair races. Simon Lawson was a, a very good winner in the men's race, 21.53 from Brett Crosley and Anthony Gott. In the women's race, personal best for Lizzie Tench, 33.11, ahead of uh, Liz McTurn, and personal best for her as well in second place. And young Catherine Stott was third. So we saw Tunes de Barber with an emphatic win by over two minutes from Christelle Dornier. 31.03, world-class running once more from the Ethiopian. 42-year-old Dornier will be delighted to finish second. Katrina Wooden went with de Barber early on, paid for that rather, but finished in third place in 33.18. 28.06, the winning time for Dathan Ritzenheim. That will mean a little less than the win, I think. That's a great performance from him. Laga. One better than last year, a little bit slower than he ran last year, 28-13. And Makoka once more doing well here in Manchester, a third, 28-22, just ahead of Collis Birmingham. Andy Vernon in sixth place.